Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here, and this video is brought to you by the online B-Ball Breakdown membership. Click the first link in the description below to learn more and join. Good. When R.J. Barrett was selected as the third pick by the New York Knicks, the roar of the crowd was so enthusiastic it erased memories from a few years ago when Phil Jackson was running things and chose Chris Stapp's Porzingis fourth back in 2015. And just after shaking hands with Adam Silver, Barrett and his father shared this incredible moment. Uh, you know, your, your children make goals. And they go out and achieve them. You have to be proud. Very proud. I'm proud of you, son. And it was right then that R.J. Barrett might have forever endeared himself to the Madison Square Garden faithful. Now it's time to figure out whether or not R.J. is going to help resurrect the Knicks out of their doldrums, where they haven't been to the playoffs in six seasons. Barrett has the size to play either the two or the three, especially in the modern NBA of positionless basketball and where he excelled in his one season at Duke was spotting up on the wing and attacking a scrambling defense. While attacking on the catch isn't consistent for him, I like how he splits his feet on the catch and goes right, and check the nice one-footed floater back to the left. Good touch and control. I looked through a ton of Knicks footage to compare the big guards they had attacking out of their offense, and you can get a sense that there will be good spacing for attacks on the catch into the lane like on this possession, where they use the post-up to bend the defense out of shape before Moutier gets the easy floater. More often than not, you'd see Barrett come off a pin down, catch, and wait, survey the scene, before using his stronger left to drive into the lane, where he's not going to get by a lot of guys, but his size can help him get the shot off in traffic. The Knicks rely more on pick and roll to create advantages, and on this possession, they use Robinson to suck in the defense down low, opening up the spot up for Alonzo Trier. He too surveys the scene before getting into the middle to finish with a nice lefty runner. Barrett is most comfortable attacking from the wing on a simple reversal, and he is not the quickest nor the fastest, but check how he uses the hesitation to get into the lane, against the zone no less, and shows more good touch with perhaps an over-reliance on that left hand. On this Dotson drive, you can see how much more space there should be for Barrett to get into the lane for that kind of runner, as they brought their center out to the perimeter a lot and spaced with quote-unquote shooters. At first glance, RJ Barrett's three-point shooting was, well, bad. He hit about 31% of his attempts on high volume, and one reason was that he tended to take a lot of heavily contested shots. I suspect if he reduces these with better shot selection, his percentage would go up a little bit. But I'm a bit more concerned with his offhand placement on top of the ball, with his right wrist completely pronated at 90 degrees. It acts like a gate that must open before the shot can be released. When you add a second timing mechanism that must fire with precision every time, it could cause issues with consistency. There are good shooters that have hand placement like this. CJ isn't as extreme with his hand placement on top, nor is his wrist pronated as much. In comparison, from the same spot, you can see how RJ needs to synchronize triple extension in his legs to the elbow and the wrist release, but then add to it the right wrist opening that gate. It's a lot to handle, and at least at this early stage in his career, it's gonna cause issues. There is some evidence of his willingness to shoot step back threes off the dribble with an occasional make, but it's not surprising that shooting from distance off the bounce is something that's not a mature part of his game at such an early age. But it's worth keeping an eye out for to see if he can open up this part of his game, since this is where the league is at nowadays and most guards are going to need this skill. Now, when he hops into his shot, lordy, it's much smoother, infinitely better rhythm, and in my analysis, clearly a more successful shot for him. The release is quicker, the timing of everything more naturally fluid, and I'm convinced if we charted all his threes from the 1-2 versus the hop, his percentage would be much higher using the hop. Let's move on to the pick and roll, where he ran a lot of them as the ball handler. As an aside, Zion Williamson ran a total of seven possessions as the role man in Duke's offense. Seven. Could you imagine an RJ Zion pick and roll? 
but that's another video where I ripped Coach K for his offense. With RJ's pick and roll, he seemed a more willing passer than scorer, believe it or not. He displayed good vision for hitting both the roll man and being able to skip it to the corner for an open look. I mean, check this gorgeous dime he fires to the cutter under the hoop for a layup. I'm anxious to see if this translates. The Knicks like to run a pin down for their two guard, then use that same screener on the ball. It would be a great way for RJ to use his size to hit Robinson for easy buckets like this one. And there's great freedom for the Knicks guards to bring the ball up and get a quick drag screen in the flow of the offense. As Hardaway rejects the screen and gets going to the hoop, it opens up kickouts for open corner threes, a safe pass that RJ should have no problem finding. Barrett also has experience coming off screens, mainly to curl and use his size advantage to finish, like this high skill inside hand layup off the glass. As you can see, there just wasn't much space in the Duke offense when running this action, and it made these kind of shots infinitely harder. In the Knicks offense, there should be more space for him to operate with better conceived floppy sets, as the defense is occupied with Knox on the weak side, it opens up the curl and drive for the layup. And look how far from the hoop Robinson sets this pin down, giving Hardaway all sorts of room to get separation into the lane for this jump hook over Tatum. It's clear to me that RJ Barrett has lots of work to do on his game in order to be effective on an NBA court, and it's essential he gets the proper training in order to see progress, which is the exact type of preparation you'll get by attending Point Guard College. With their intelligent approach to teaching the game, you'll learn what it truly takes to become great. With camps in over 30 states and Canada, PGC will unlock your true potential and transform you into the best player you can be. If you want to avoid the Draymond sag, there is no better environment to raise your game than PGC. One thing I like to see is Barrett posting up smaller defenders. He's got the size, and if Fizzell can get the right lineups out there, there will be times he'll have several inches on his man. He barely got to do this in college, but he showed the foundation of a nice post game, including facing up and using his mid-range jumper to good effect. The Knicks didn't get their guards into the post much at all last year, but there was a sense that they wanted to take advantage when they did get a mismatch. Overall, the Knicks have a pretty promising roster, even if they don't sign a big-name free agent this offseason, and it's kind of looking that way at the moment. Dennis Smith Jr. has shown flashes throughout his short career and could become a dynamic guard paired alongside R.J. Barrett. Alonzo Trier is a bad man, a player who can get buckets from anywhere on the floor and someone who demands a lot more minutes next year. Throw in Damian Dotson, who was terrific defensively and has real promise on offense, and Coach Dave Fisdale will have his hands full trying to balance out minutes for these four guys. I'm not sure where Kevin Knox is at this stage of his young career, but he's got plenty of time to figure it out. Mitchell Robinson told me last year that he tries to block every shot, and when you watch how active he is defensively, it certainly appears that way. There isn't a lot of faith in Knicks management considering their track record, but they've been inching closer to respectability, and if R.J. Barrett becomes the solid pro that I think he'll be, then they should at least come close to winning as many games as they lose next year. And while that might not get them into the playoffs, perhaps that type of improvement in culture and bottom line results would finally entice a headlining free agent to roll the dice and head to the Big Apple to be their savior. I asked friend of the breakdown and comedian John Henson from the show's Talk Soup, Wipeout, and the Halloween Baking Championship on the Food Network to give all you crazy Knicks fans one last word of encouragement. All right, Knicks fans, let's be honest. It's been a roller coaster even for us. First, I think we were all convinced we were going to get two max players, then we were hoping we might get one. Now I think we're all kind of accepting the fact that we're not going to get any and praying that they don't give out crappy contracts. But we did get R.J. Barrett. We didn't get Zion, but R.J. was a consensus number one pick before this season. There's nothing to be upset about. He's got the prototypical size and uh, body for a two guard. He should be able to 
Uh, he has the physical gifts to defend and excel offensively. Maybe his decision making is questionable, but the guy wants to be a Nick, and that has to count for a lot, especially when KP pulled a Judas on us. So now we just got to figure out which one of our 200 odd backup point guards and two guards to keep, which to jettison, pray that Knox takes a step forward, and hope that Mitch keeps on Mitching. Then again, we could max out the twin towers of DeAndre Jordan and Inez Cantor. <laughs> Sports fans, Coach Nick again, and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then I've got a new online basketball membership where I share with you the best of what NBA teams are doing to help you be more successful on the court. Click the first link in the description or the pinned comment below to learn more. And don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know how you feel about today's video. Check your settings to make sure you get notified each time we drop a new one. After all, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel, we're a conversation. You in?